This is the 2021 Lincoln Nautilus, powered by either a 2-liter turbo or a 2.7-liter twin-turbo engine. Now, a few exciting things about the new 2021 Nautilus. It got an upgrade. Now, a little bit of a visual on the outside, but the big thing is going to be the inside. We went from an interesting screen that was kind of pushed into the dash into a 12.3-inch digital that looks incredible. Absolutely beautiful. I'm excited to share it with you today. Steve here, Cars with Steve, and before we get started, I want to give Marigold Lincoln a huge shout out and a thank you for giving me access to this vehicle to shoot the video for me today. Drop down in the description below for their contact details. And then I also want to let you guys know of a few giveaways that are coming up. When the channel hits 3,500 subscribers, giving away a few dash cans and some gift cards. 5,000 subscribers, going to be giving away an exotic car driving experience or two. It's going to be an exciting time. But let's dive right into it and see what the 2021 Lincoln Nautilus has to offer. Now starting off, taking a peek under the hood of the vehicle. Now the 2021 Nautilus does have two available engine choices. It's either a 2 liter turbo or a 2.7 liter twin turbo that we're looking at inside of this vehicle. From a power perspective, the 2 liter is going to push out 250 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque, while the 2.7 liter is going to be able to push out 335 horsepower and 380 pound feet of torque. It is incredible what this thing can do. Now, taking a peek under the hood, a few things that we've got easy access to. We can easily top up our fluids if we want to. We can easily check or change our oil if we're handy, want to do it ourselves. And we've also got easy access to the battery in case we ever need to give anybody a boost. Now, taking a peek at some standard technology, as you can see there, we do have our backup camera. We've got the reverse sensing system, so a few sensors in the back there. Now, we also do have a lane keeping system as well as a blind spot system, so that lets us know if anybody's under the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Now, when it comes down to the Nautilus, we are looking at the 201A version of the vehicle. We do have the optional 360 camera, which is going to give us a forward sensing system as well, and it also gives us that front facing camera. So we can just kind of make that out along the bottom of the grill there, but that looks beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So we've got some stitch views that we can get inside of the vehicle. We're going to touch on that in just a little bit. All right, we're taking a peek at the key fob. So nothing's changed between the 2020 versus the 2021 model year. Along the very top, we've got our unlock button, our lock button, remote start, our trunk release, as well as our horn or a panic alarm button. Now on top of that, we do still have our emergency access key. So if we ever need to get access to the vehicle without the fob starting, we've got the ability to do that. Now, when it comes down to remote starting the vehicle, we can either remote start it through our cell phone. So through the Lincoln Way app, whether an Android or an iPhone device, we can also remote start from the key fob. Remote starting from the key fob, all we're gonna do is press this lock button once and the circle button twice. So as you can see there, the vehicle is remote started. In order to cancel the remote start from the fob, we're going to press that circle button once. And the remote start is now canceled. Now when it comes down to getting in the trunk of the vehicle, we've got a couple options. Looking at the key fob, we've got the ability to double press this button in order to get into the trunk, but We've also got a couple options on the outside, even on the inside. So just to the left of the steering wheel, there's a button we can open and close it. It's a power lift gate. We've also got the ability to open it up on the outside. So if we look in Lincoln, just under the L, and we move our way down, there's a button right underneath, and that can move that lift gate up and down. But one of the beautiful things about the Nautilus is that, or the entire Lincoln lineup, is that we do have a foot-activated power lift gate. So you got a handful of golf bags, groceries, whatever the case may be. All you're going to do is just swipe your foot underneath and step back. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Let's have a peek inside. Now taking a peek at the cargo dimensions. So they're going to be showing up there. So as you can see, we have a nice amount of width, depth, and height. Now when it comes down to height, I've actually measured from the very top here all the way down. So we do have a couple extra inches in behind if we need that space. But having said that, loading it will be a little bit difficult. So I just go from the very top of the lip there all the way down to the bottom instead. So with that second row folded down, as you can see, we have a lot more cargo space. Specifically, we've got a lot more depth inside of the vehicle. Now, if you need a little bit more space than that, you could look at the Lincoln Aviator instead. If you need a little bit less, you could absolutely look at the Lincoln Corsair. There are videos coming soon. Drop down in the description below for those head-to-head -head videos going over the Lincoln Corsair versus the Nautilus, etc. Let's take a closer look in the back now. So, a couple things to point out along the right-hand side. So as you can see there, we do have a speaker. We've got a few cargo hooks as well. Now, we also do have the ability for privacy shades, so that's an easy installation, easy removal if we'd like it. 
looking along the left hand side so we've got a 12 volt adapter if we need to plug in a traditional cigarette lighter adapter we can do that and we've also got power seats so we've got the ability to manually fold down if we want to but if we're in the back here and we need to fold down we can either press and hold one side now one thing to note is that it is powered down but it is manual back up so definitely something to consider there and then as you can see we do have one more cargo hook along the side now this is going to be the standard cover for the trunk area. You do have the option for a thermoplastic rubber tray instead, but it's really going to come down to a matter of personal preference. Along the back, as you can see, we do have some scuff plates, which is great. Now taking a peek as we lift up this cover, this is new for the 2021 model year. So we do not have that tire standard anymore. We do have the inflator kit instead. Looking along the left hand side, as you can see there, we do have our spigot if we ever need to use a jerry can to fill up the tank. And we've got a little bit of storage space along both sides. Now, I'm kind of torn on the idea of not having the spare tire, but one of the nice things about being a Lincoln owner is that you do have Lincoln roadside assistance for the lifetime that you own the vehicle. If that gets transferred out to another person, so if you sell your vehicle, they're going to be able to get six years up to 110,000 kilometers of coverage under that roadside assistance program. Now, if you're ever going to be towing inside of this vehicle, I absolutely recommend to get the tow package from the factory for a few different reasons. Firstly, it just looks aesthetically more pleasing. The way that it's cut out, it just fits nicely in the bumper. That's number one. Number two, towing capacity. When it comes down to it, you do something after market, you're going to be able to tow about 1,500 pounds. However, you get the tow package from the factory, and that's going to go up to 3,500 pound towing capacity, whether you're looking at the 2 liter or the 2.7 liter engine. Now, on top of that, when you get the tow package from the factory, you also do get trailer sway control. The sway control, if this vehicle senses that there's sway going on in the trailer, it's automatically going to apply engine braking to get that sway under control. Now, filling up and fuel inside of the vehicle is a straightforward process. If we look along our driver's side door, we've got a little cutout there. All we're going to do is press and that opens up. As you can see, we've got a capless system. We're just going to insert our hose, fill up, and once we're done, we're going to close and lock it back into place. Now, when it comes down to fuel quality, minimum manufacturer's recommendation is just 87 octane, so your regular fuel. Now, having said that, this is a performance vehicle. So when it comes down to the fuel quality, I do recommend the 91 octane instead, so a premium fuel. Because if we look at the horsepower and the torque specs, those are all accomplished using a 91 octane. Now, when it comes down to it, do you need to use that higher quality fuel? No, but you will notice about a 10% fuel economy savings if you go into that premium fuel instead, and it will be better underneath the hood. When it comes down to second row spacing, so I've got the driver's seat set up for somebody who's six feet tall. I'm six feet tall, so I've got plenty of room for my knees. I've got lots of room for my feet as well. Now, when it comes down to up overhead, I've got maybe an inch of head space in the back seat. If I moved into the middle, I'd have an inch and a half maybe up ahead. So it's definitely something to know. If you've got taller people, they may need to either sit in the driver passenger seat, or you might have to look at the aviator or the navigator instead, because we're gonna have a lot more head clearance space when it comes down to it. Now, looking along the back, so as you can see along the driver and the passenger side, we do have pockets along both seats. And as we start to move down, so as you can see there, we do have heated seats. Now, the heated seats are going to be just for the outside seats. So the outboard seats, the middle seat here does not, it's not going to be heated. So definitely something to note there. As we start to move down a little bit more, so we do have a little button there that we can press, and that's going to show us. So we've got a built-in inverter as well as a few USB ports, or so traditional USB and our USB-C. Other thing to point out on the back, as you can see there, we do have a few cup holders. So just pull that down in order to reveal them. And all we have to do is just lift in order to lock it back into place. All right, now looking inside the vehicle, driver's side door. So along the top there, very, very nice cutout along the side as we go. And stopping because we do have our unlock and our lock button, as well as three individual seat memory buttons. Now the seat memory button's nice thing because we can create individual profiles for drivers. So we can set up our driver's seat as well as our steering wheel and our side view mirrors. And then we're just gonna press and hold either one, two, or three. And that's gonna remember our own personal preferences. As we start to move down a little bit, as you can see there, we've got the ability to kill off power to our side view mirrors. We can power fold our side view mirrors and we've got the ability to move our windows up and down. Now this one is the 201A version of the vehicle. So for people down in the States, that is the reserve two. And that's gonna give you a few added speakers throughout the vehicle. As we look just to the left hand side of the steering wheel, so a few buttons to point out. So this one here is going to open and close that lift gate for us. We've got our traction control so we can turn that on or off as necessary. This is going to be the dimmer switch and that's going to make the screen brighter or darker for the instrument cluster. From there we also do have a switch to let us change between our different running lamp modes. Honestly the only two that I really recommend you worry about are going to be at the very bottom which is going to turn the lights off 
or A, which is our auto setting. One of the nice things about the auto setting is that it's automatically going to flip us between the daytime or the nighttime running lamps, depending on how bright it is outside. Moving down a tiny little bit more, we do have our parking brake. And if we ever need to get under the hood, we're just gonna pull the latch there. And if you are handy doing ECU flashes, things like that, we've got our OBD2 port right along the top. Adjusting the driver's seat inside of the Lincoln Nautilus is a very straightforward process, and it is power for the driver and the passenger side. So very straightforward, just along the left-hand side there, we've got a series of levers. Very first one, that's going to allow us to bring the seat forwards or backwards. We can lift the entire seat up, or we can lower the entire seat down. So just depending on if you're a little bit taller or not. Now, when it comes down to it with the seat all the way down, I've got about three, maybe three and a half inches of headspace from where I'm sitting here. So if you're a little bit taller, something to note, like if you're six four, you may be able to fit in this okay. Any taller, you're going to the aviator or the navigator. As we start to move back, we've got another lever, which is going to bring the backrest forwards or backwards. And then the next one is going to be for our lumbar support. So we've got the ability to adjust the lumbar support from there. Now, one thing to note is that the Nautilus does have the ability for massage chair seats. The one that I'm in right now, unfortunately, doesn't have it. But there would be a hot button press along the side there, which would also hotkey in order to pull that up. And we can also access it through that new SYNC 4 system. Adjusting the steering wheel inside of the Nautilus is also power, and it's a straightforward process. So just by our left knee, there's a little pad. We're just going to move that as necessary, so it's telescopic, so we can move it in and out. We can move it up and down. And once you've got that perfect position set up, so perfect position for your steering wheel, for your seat, as well as for your side view mirrors, you're just going to press and hold either one, two, or three along the door in order to set up your own personal profile. Now, this is the new SYNC 4 infotainment system inside of the 2021 Lincoln Nautilus. I think the thing looks very, very sharp. I kind of love that stretched out look along the dash there, which is interesting because when we look in the Mach-E and the new 2021 Ford Edge, it actually goes up and down like a phablet style instead. So stretching it across, it actually, it's a very unique styling choice, but it works really, really nicely. Now, when it comes down to it, this is going to be the home screen we're met, that we're met with when the vehicle's first turned on. Now, you might be in different screens, just kind of depending on what you did when you turn the vehicle off, but this is typically the screen that we're going to see. So we've got our navigation along the side there. We can hop up and down between different screens if we'd like to, but starting off on our audio settings. So audio, we've got the ability to change out our sources. So we can go between AM, FM, Sirius XM, or Bluetooth. If we had a USB stick with MP3s, that would show up as a source. And if a phone was connected, that would also show up as an available source there as well. So we can kind of choose what we'd like as we go, pressing the back button there. Now we've got a couple different ways that we can tune. So we can direct tune that way. We can tune using the knob, etc. And along the very top, as you can see, we've got some sound settings. So we've got the ability to change out our tone settings. So our treble mid-range bass would be the settings in there. We've also got our balance and fade, which is an interesting one. So we can kind of adjust as we've got the number of people in the vehicle. So if you're only person, you can select there and then it's going to really focus the sound on you. If you're kind of playing around, you don't like the way it sounds, just press reset. That's going to bring you back to your default settings. Speed compensated volume. We've got the different type of surround sound. So we've got off the on stage or the audience, which is going to affect the end experience there. So definitely recommend getting in behind the wheel of these things and testing this out because it's really neat how this thing is going to end up sounding. Now, when it comes down to saving presets, if you look along the bottom there, we've got a mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM, etc. So once we've tuned to a station that we want to save, all we're going to do is press and hold any of the available spots. And as you can see, it's saved. It's really that simple. And it can be a mix of those different options. When it comes into adding a phone, it's a very straightforward process. Now, one of the nice things about the 2021 Nautilus is that we are now wireless for not only connecting your phone, which is actually the same in the 2020, but we do now have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which is incredible. So adding a phone in, it's a very straightforward process. So on your phone, all you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you've got your Bluetooth turned on. So we're gonna go Bluetooth. We're just gonna make sure we toggle it on. Once your Bluetooth is on, we're just gonna hit add phone and watch this. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, so on your phone, you're just gonna wait until Lincoln Nautilus pops up and we're just gonna hit other, Confirm so we're gonna connect. The pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, so we just need to make sure that the pin numbers match up and they do, so we're gonna hit pair and yes. All right, next up, it's asking me, do I wanna allow my contacts and favorites to sync? I do wanna do that, so I'm just gonna hit allow and watch. 
All For right. your safety, please stay alert to change in road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. All right, so as you can see there, I am now connected. 911 Assist, I always recommend turning that one on. And the big reason why is because if you're ever in an accident when you're inside the vehicle and it recognizes there's an accident, it's automatically going to die on 911 for you to talk to the operator. So definitely a useful system. And we're just going to hit finish there and we're connected. So it really is that simple. We've got my recent calls, contacts, my keypad, phoneless messaging. We can use Siri as our assistant as well. Now, one thing, remember I said when I was connected, I now have the ability to change out my source. So I can, I've got my phone there so we can connect to my phone, whatever audio I've got going on there. And I've got a radio app on my phone called LiveX Live. So that's gonna work directly through this middle screen, which is incredible. All right, let's jump back into phone for a second there because as you can see, I'm fully connected. Now I've also got the option to add in Apple CarPlay. So very straightforward as well. It's asking me, do I wanna use CarPlay, CarPlay with Sync 4? So I wanna hit use CarPlay. Okay, my device, my device supports Apple CarPlay, so I just need to make sure I enable that. Connecting to CarPlay should take a second. Three, two, and go. Beautiful. All right, so as you can see, I am now fully connected. We've got my phone, we've got my messages and things like that. Now, one of the nice things about the Nautilus is that it does have factory navigation, but if you prefer to use other types of navigation, like maybe you prefer Apple Maps, Google Maps, or Waze, we've got the capability to use those things directly through this middle screen. So we click on Waze there and look at that. Look at how beautiful that looks. Like I love the fact that we've got the ability to do this inside of the Nautilus. If we've got multiple phones connected, it would show up along the top there. We can press that button in order to hop back into our Apple CarPlay home screen. And one of the nice things about this is that we've also got the ability to kind of adjust things a little bit. I'll show you what I mean. If we go into our phone general settings, we go into CarPlay. We've got the vehicle that we just connected to and we can now customize the tray. So if you have a tendency, maybe you prefer to use the Waze app instead, we can just grab it, we can drag it to the top and look at that. It's updating. I listen to podcasts a little bit. So let's go up and drag our podcast up as well. So you can kind of adjust this as necessary. And maybe you're never going to use audiobooks. We've got the capability to remove that. Now, if you ever remove something you want to add back in, more apps will show up along the bottom. If you don't like the layout, all you're going to do is hit reset, reset screen layout. And that's just going to bring you back to that default screen instead. Moving back in, as you can see, it's reset, reset it for me, which is very, really straightforward. And it's a really great look to it. Now, one of the nice things about the new tech inside of the Nautilus is that we've got the ability to either run off of whatever map application that we'd like to on our phone, but we can still hot button press in order to get into that sync force of the factory navigation instead. So running off, rather than running off of your phone's data plan, you'd be running off of the vehicle's GPS instead. So really, really neat. We're gonna get down to navigation in just a second. But if you wanna disable Apple CarPlay, it's a very straightforward process. All we're gonna do is we can either go to settings or we can just go to phone list along the top. So we press phone list and it's got my phone there. So now I can jump into my phone and we've got a couple options. So if I'd like to, I can disable CarPlay if I want. I can connect Bluetooth and phone media instead. So it's gonna connect back to my phone just on Bluetooth so I can still make phone calls and things like that without using, without using Apple CarPlay. So that's really, really nice. Now jumping back in, I do have the ability to either disconnect my phone or I can completely remove it. So I press the delete button there. Do I wanna remove my phone? Yes or no. And that's the basics of setting an iPhone up on this Sync 4 screen. Right now, setting up an Android device is literally the exact same process, so very straightforward. Because I still have my iPhone connected, what's going to happen is we can now go into the phone list there and we can click on Search Add Phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. So on your Android device, all you're going to do is make sure that you've got your Bluetooth turned on and you're going to wait for Lincoln Nautilus to show up under available devices. It's shown up there and we're just going to wait for a second. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, just making sure that the pins match up, which in this case they do. So we're going to hit OK and yes. For your safety, please stay alert to change in road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so as you can see there, we are connected. Now, a couple things, it's popped, up, it's popped up another message on my screen. So do I want to allow access to my contacts? Yes, let's allow that as well as to my messages. But as you can see there, device supports Android Auto. So really straightforward in order to set it up, all we're going to do is hit enable. Okay, now on my phone, it's saying Android Auto would like to turn on Bluetooth, etc. So we're just going to follow the directions on the phone. 
and we are connected. Look at this, look at this, look at how amazing this thing looks. Big, beautiful, bright screen. Now, as you saw there, we've got the ability to use Google Maps. We can use Waze and things like that directly through this middle screen as well, which is incredible. Love the fact we've got the capabilities to do it. Very similar to the Apple site on Android, we've got the ability to use our Google Assistant. We've got our notification center and a number of other things. So it's ultimately gonna depend on what apps you've got installed on the vehicle and on your phone, I should say. Now, one thing to note is that if your app is not showing up, it may not be supported by Android Auto. The other side of things is that you may not have your operating system up to date, or you may not have the most recent version of your app. So if your app's not showing up on the screen there, just update your operating system. Make sure you've got the most recent version of your app installed as well. Now, one of the nice things about the Android side of things is that we do have the ability to look at different things for Android Auto. So if we jump into our Android Auto settings, look at this. We can see what car we're currently connected to. We can look for connection help. We can also customize our launcher. So very similar to what we saw on the Apple side of things. So if you have a preference on which one you'd like to use, we can adjust as we'd like to. So we're just going to drag and hold. Now, one thing to note, when we update on this screen, it's not going to automatically update on the Android Auto screen. So we do need to reset Android Auto and relaunch it in order for it to update the look that we'd like. So that's definitely one, one area where Apple kind of jumps ahead of Android from that perspective. But we're now connected. As you can see there, we've got our Google de detection. So we've got the ability to use voice commands. We can resume media, use our Google Assistant, and a number of other things. Wireless Android Auto, so incredible. I love the fact we're now wired, or wireless, I should say, for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now, very similar to what we just finished seeing on the Apple side of things, in order to remove a phone, we can either jump into our settings or we can press the phone list along the top, and we've got all of the connected devices. When we click in, because we've got multiple devices connected, we've got some different connection options or some phone settings. So we can jump into our phone settings. We can now save it as a favorite if we've got multiple phones connected. So your choice there, and you've got the ability to do a few things. Moving back, we can either disable Android Auto or we can just completely scrap the phone if we want to and disconnect it. So as you can see there, that phone is now disconnected. And if I want to, I can just connect back to the iPhone again. So as you can see, it's really that simple. Next up, let's move into factory navigation. So very straightforward. We've got quite a few things that we can do here. So let's kind of start off as we go. We're going to begin with our menu along the top left hand side. We've got our map orientation. So we've got either the 3D heading up, 2D, etc. So we've got whatever preference we'd like there on our voice. So that's what's happening when we've got an upcoming turn. So is a voice going to say turning in 200 meters with a tone? Is it just going to be the voice or just the tone? It's going to be a matter of preference there. We can avoid en route as well. So if you want to avoid highways, toll roads, etc. I actually love the look of the way that this thing is now because it was kind of clunky the way that it was before but they've really optimized the way that this looks so kudos Lincoln for kind of giving this thing a great upgrade now we can also show certain things on the on the map so different point of interest icons so things like food parking gas ATM etc which is great and we've also got some more setting options. So more setting, we've got some routing and preference options. So we can use our 3D map, dynamic rerouting, and preferred routes, so the fastest, shortest, or the most eco-friendly. We've got some different options there. We've got different alert preferences as well as predictive destinations, privacy, and a basic about setting as well. So we can kind of see what's going on with our navigation version. So if you don't have the most up-to-date version, we've got the ability to easily update that as well. And that's gonna be the basics of our map settings there. Now, when it comes down to searching for an address, very straightforward. So we're just going to press that search icon there, and we can search for destinations a few different ways. So actually, if we go back, we can look at my recent saved gas stations and a number of other things. So we can look at previous destinations. This is kind of neat. We can see where the nearest Lincoln dealer is if we need to get the vehicle serviced. When it comes down to searching for a destination, we can enter in the GPS coordinates if we want to, or we can start typing in an address, and it's predictive. So if we start typing, we give it a second, as you can see there, it's given us a few different options. So we're just going to select on the address there. It's the address of the dealership here. Now we can call if we want to, which is neat. We can save it or we can look for available parking, which is kind of cool. And then we can easily just start the route. Obey traffic laws. Be alert and use voice commands while driving. Okay, so please proceed to the highlighted road. <laughs> so we're not going too far, obviously. And we've got some flexibility and some capability here. Now we can press this button along the bottom in order to get rid of that menu that was there. So stretching this thing out all along the side, which I think looks great. We've got other options. We can see kind of what's going on at the route, how far we need to go. We can also look at the overview. We can add different stops or we can just cancel the route out that we've done. Now, because we've canceled, if we look at our recent menu now, We've got previous addresses that we've done, that we've gone to. We can look at our saved addresses along the bottom there as well. And as I mentioned, we've got the ability to press that in order to really stretch the screen out along that whole 12 inch. It looks incredible when it's stretched out like that. And that's gonna be the basics of the factory navigation. 
Looking along the bottom tray, we do have a favorite button now, which is kind of neat because if there's one thing that you tend to go to the most, you've got the ability to add in whatever one you'd like to. So if you tend to listen to your different audio sources, you want to go to your phone list and things like that, you can set a favorite position. I'll show you what that looks like. Like maybe you have a tendency to, oh, I don't know. Let's look at audio sources. So we add audio sources and all of a sudden that's going to be our hot button press along the bottom there. So now we can jump into our AM, FM, Sirius, etc. just by doing that. We jump into different different screen and as you can see it's defaulted us back to our audio settings and then we can edit that out to change that around as necessary. So it's a really cool feature that they've added in. That was available in the 2021 F-150 as well. Moving into our apps, because I'm connected through my, my iPhone, I've got a few different apps that I can use. So I can hot press into Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. I've got the Lincoln Way app. I've got LiveX Live as well, which is a radio app on this thing. And I've also got Waze that I can use directly through this middle screen, which is great. So that's one of the nice things is that certain apps, you do not actually have to be connected through Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to work. They will work directly through this middle screen, just over Bluetooth. So we do have the ability to jump into our app catalog along the back there in order to see what apps are going to be available on this screen. Moving into our settings next, so a ton of different options that are available there. So starting off, as you can see, we do have radio. So radio is going to give us a number of options. We've got our HD radio, radio text, and our preset pages. I honestly always recommend for preset pages, just go up to your allowed maximum, so five pages there. And I'll show you why in just a second. So we've done five pages. Let's go to our audio settings now. So as you see there, because we've done that, we've now got up to 30 individual presets that are saved. So if you're a heavy listener of different stations, whether that's AM, FM, Sirius, etc., you can have up to 30 individual presets. Now on that side of things, if we change the source out to Sirius XM for a second, I want to show you something. So we go Sirius XM. Let's jump back into our settings. And now this is a Sirius button. Very serious. Why so serious? So as you can see there, we've got our sound settings. So we can look at some different options there, which we've already kind of been through that. We've got our subscription, what's going on there. We can create listeners. That's a really cool feature because if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, you can create your own individual profile depending on who's in the vehicle, which is great. We've got our Sirius XM favorites, listening history. We've got some different settings. So if you have a tendency to, you know, maybe look and block explicit content, you've got the capability to do that. And we've got our preset pages there again. Now, when we jump back and we change our source back to AM, FM, etc. We jump back into settings, that's brought us back to our radio default instead. Phone list is gonna be all the connected devices. So we've got my phone that is connected. If you have three or four devices there, you can try to choose and select whatever one you'd like to. Back, we've got sync navigation. So we're relying on that sync three minute navigation. So that's gonna be the navigation preferences that we've already been through. Navigation sources, so we've got Sync or we've got Waze. So as I mentioned, we don't have to be connected through Apple CarPlay to use Waze. We'd be able to use that directly through this middle screen. So we can kind of select what's going on there. Basic sound settings, so we have already been through the sound settings there, but we've got our tone, balance, and fade, etc. This is just another way to get down to it. Vehicle settings, so we've got quite a few different vehicle settings there. A rear occupant alert. Watch what happens when I turn the vehicle off. Okay, that is a really cool setting. So just gives you a little reminder to check to make sure there's nobody in the back seat. You can toggle that on or off as necessary. So really, really neat. I definitely recommend keeping it on, especially if you have young kids. Moving down, we've got our serial number and our door pad key code. So key code, let's actually hop outside to see how that works. On the outside of the vehicle, we can just kind of make it out there, but we've got a series of numbers and that's going to give us the ability to get keyless entry inside of the vehicle. So if we need to hop inside just to grab a few things, we can enter a five digit factory number. And we also do have the ability to set up our own numbers as we, if we'd like to. So if you've got a five digit number you'd rather remember or easier to remember, we've got the capability to program that in if we'd like to. So pretty neat. So you do have the option. There's a five digit factory number as a default and we can set up a number of other codes if there's a five digit number that you're going to remember instead. Rear view camera delay. So when we actually go to shift the vehicle into reverse, there's a little delay before the camera comes up. Our clock settings, we can move between hours and minutes, AM, PM. We can switch out to that 12, uh, 24 hour military time instead and our auto time update. So auto time update is interesting if we're going across the country. So from the East Coast to the West Coast, West East, etc., it's automatically going to update us based off of the GPS location, but it's also going to update us when we're in the spring or the fall. So if we're daylight savings time, we're springing forward, falling backwards, etc., it'll automatically update us for that as well. 
personal profile. So if you've got multiple people in the vehicle, you've got the ability to set it up so that essentially people can have their own profile. So to remember your audio settings, your phone settings, and a number of other things. And it's all tied into a specific fob or using your phone instead, which I think is a great feature. So we've got the ability to easily set that one up there. It's honestly, it's really straightforward as you go. Moving into some general settings now. So general settings, we can change between English, Spanish, or French, kilometers or miles, Celsius, Fahrenheit, the beeping that we're getting here. If that drives you nuts, you can toggle it off. Basic software licenses, and we can also do a reset. So reset, we can either connect link and way. So the link and connect reset, essentially that, what that's going to do is you can remote start directly through your cell phone. You can lock and unlock the vehicle, and you've also got the ability to use it as a key. So if you had the link and connect app installed, you'd be able to reset that. So let's say if it's giving you issues, you can reset it. If you need to kick somebody off, you can reset it. If for whatever reason the vehicle is giving you issues, or if you're selling, just do our master reset to bring you back to your factory defaults again. Next up, we've got the display setting. So beautiful display, but if you find it's a little bit too busy, you've got the ability to toggle it off if you'd like to. So you can just press display off. As you can see, it turns it off, bring it back to life again. We can turn it into a calming screen. So we've got the time and the date. Same thing, button press to bring it back to life. We can adjust the brightness of the screen if we'd like to, and we've got different modes. So as of right now, it's in the daytime mode. We've got the ability to lock it out into daytime permanently, or we can lock it out into the nighttime mode instead. So that one is going to really be a matter of personal preference, and that's going to tweak out the colors and things like that just to make it a little bit easier on the eyes. And that's going to automatically adjust depending on how dark or bright it is outside. That's going to be the basics of the display settings. Bluetooth, we've got the ability to toggle our Bluetooth on and off, and we can also change the vehicle name. So if you have a preference, you want to call it, I don't know, Joe's Nautilus, you've got the capability to easily do that. Manage Wi-Fi networks. So important, I do recommend make sure that your Wi-Fi is on and view available networks. Make sure that you connect to your Wi-Fi network at home. And the big reason why is because of this, system updates. So I always recommend make sure your system updates are turned on and you can schedule updates to come on at a certain time as well. But what'll happen is the vehicle will do an over the air update for available updates and it's automatically going to update the vehicle for you. So definitely recommend keeping that one on, but just make sure you're connected at home before you do. Vehicle hotspot. Now the vehicle itself is equipped with an onboard modem, so we've got the ability to disable that if we want to, but if you've got a data only plan through your cell phone provider, you've got the ability to use the vehicle as a hotspot for up to 10 devices. So you can toggle that one on or off. You've got different settings that are available as well. So we can see, you can name the vehicle setting if you'd like to. You can create a different password. You can select different security settings as well. Next up, mobile apps. Straightforward, we've got the ability to have certain apps, so Android apps working via USB and different mobile apps that work over Bluetooth as well. So actually that's an interesting one because if we go mobile apps there, so enable certain apps, so certain apps will work directly through the screen. And as you can see there, we've got different app settings that, that are now available as well. Lincoln Assistant. So Lincoln Assistant is an interesting one. So we've got the ability to press a button on the steering wheel in order to be able to turn on our voice commands. And one of the nice things is that we can also have this thing listened for wake words. So let's show you how that works there. So we've got the ability to choose a preferred wake word. So we can say, oh, that's an interesting one. So why don't we start there? Maybe you want to change the radio station. Listen to this. Okay, Lincoln. 97.7. Tuning to FM 97.7. Oh, would you look at that? So it's listed for that wake word, very similar to what would happen with Google or Siri as well, but it's nice because we can change stations, we can navigate and make phone calls, etc., all by using our voice, which is incredible. We can set preferred wake words if we want to. We can set our advanced mode. So when we change the station there, it let us know that it was changing the station, but when we turn advanced mode on, we don't get as many notifications. So I want you to listen to something for a second. Okay, Lincoln. 94.9. Okay. So as you saw there, it changed the station for us, but it didn't let us know. So advanced mode means that we won't get as many confirmations. Phone confirmation, do you want to call such and such person? Yes or no. And the voice command list. So when we bring up the Lincoln Assistant, this is the command list. So it looks really sharp in this thing, actually. So I probably wouldn't turn it off, but you've got the capability to toggle it on or off if you'd like to ambient light. We do have some ambient light all throughout the vehicle. We've got the ability to select whatever ambient light setting we'd like to there, and it's going to show up along different parts of the vehicle. So cup holders along our feet, along the door handles, and a few other spots. 
Next up, we've got a digital owner's manual. So if you get any weird dash lights, you want to kind of know what's going on, just go to the digital owner's manual now. And that's something that's new for Lincoln and Ford vehicles. So 2021, 22, etc. regular paper printed manuals are going to be a thing of the past. So everything's going to be digitized instead. You've got the ability to look at it here. You also can jump either to the Lincoln or to the Ford OEM website in order to download your owner's manual that way as well. 911 assist. So as I mentioned, make sure that you do have 911 assist set up because if the vehicle senses a collision, it's automatically going to dial 911 for you. And then you've also got the ability to set up your emergency contacts as well. Lastly, we've got our valet mode. Valet mode, so what that's going to do is you enter in a four digit pin number and that's going to lock out the screen. So people can't look around and look through your settings and notifications and check your addresses and things like that. So we've got the ability to lock it out, which is great. And it won't come back on. So even if you turn the vehicle off and turn it back on again, you, the, the, you essentially still have to enter that four digit number or else you're permanently, permanently going to be locked out. So definitely something to think about, but it is a very useful feature. Now, next up, as you saw there, so we pressed a button there. So as we can see, we've got a series of different screens that we can kind of jump in between there. Now, whatever we press, so let's say if we're on our map there, we can just kind of press and it'll swipe across whatever's going on. So we've got the ability to select different screens along the side. And that is gonna be the basics of the new SYNC 4 system. Now, as we start to move down the screen a little bit, so down the center stack, as you can see there, so first thing to point out, we do have our park assist. So the vehicle can help us out with parking. So we can either navigate to, or it can help us out with park assist. So park assist, the vehicle can help us out with either parallel park out, it can help us with parallel park in, or it can help us with perpendicular parking. Let's see how that feature works. Now using Park Assist inside of the 2021 Nautilus is an extremely straightforward process. We're going to button press and then literally just follow the directions that are on the screen. So if we look down the console there, so we look down the screen and we start to move down the center stack, we've got a series of different buttons there. So if you take a peek, we've got this little P button. And what we're going to do is we're just going to press that P button and watching up on the screen there. So as you can see, so it's saying to navigate to parking or active park assist. So tapping active park assist in the vehicle can help us out with three different things. So it can either help us out with parallel parking, it can help us out with parallel park out, or it can help us out with perpendicular parking. So we've got some different options there. So just because of the nature of the lot that I'm in right now, I'm gonna be going for perpendicular parking and it's very straightforward. So we're literally just gonna follow the instructions on screen. Now by a default, it's gonna look on the right hand side. But if we just take that left stick and we go to the left, it's going to default us to look to the left. So we, as you can see there, we can either look to the left, we can look to the right. It depends on what's going on with that turning signal. So I wanna look on the left hand side, we're just gonna follow the directions on screen. So it wants me to pull forward, it's going to scan for a spot and it's found one so I'm just going to follow the directions it's telling me to stop okay now all it wants me to do is shift into reverse so release the steering wheel shift into reverse so I'm just going to press the reverse button there and okay drive back slowly so it's telling me to drive backwards I'm literally just following the directions on the screen there This is so cool. I love this. Look at this. It's got the steering wheel under control. It's doing its thing. All right. Wants me to switch into drive. So moving into drive. Vehicle's going to start driving me forward. We've got a little countdown timer along the top there as well. So it lets us know kind of what's going on when we have to start going. And we just literally have to follow this as we go. <laughs> and that's it. It really is that simple using Park Assist. So really, really great. I love the fact that we've got that. And moving down, we can just button press in order to get rid of it if we've accidentally pressed. And then one more in order to get rid of it off the screen. Now the vehicle is equipped with a 360 camera if you get the package for it. If not, it's just gonna be a regular backup camera. But as you can see there, we've got a beautiful view of it. We've got our full 360 view as well. And we can kill off the reverse sensing system. So that beeping that we get as we're backing up, if you're not a fan of it, you've got the ability to easily turn it off. Pressing the button one more time is gonna hot press to give us a front view. Pressing again is gonna give us a front 180 degree view. And then back to turning it off again. Moving down a tiny little bit more, this is going to be a hot key to bring up some driver assistance settings. The auto start stop, so if we're stopped at a light, it might kill power to the engine. Auto hold, if we come to a complete stop and take your foot off the brake, it's going to hold you in place. 
and then just button press that again in order to get rid of it. Now this is new for the 2021 model year. So we've got our piano keys, which are available in the Corsair, the, the Aviator, as well as the Navigator. So they did bring it into the Nautilus for 2021 and it looks really, really sharp. So we've got our engine start stop, our park reverse neutral drive, and then our S, so our sport mode. Now one of the nice things about the sport mode is that essentially is going to give you a much sportier feel. It's going to change around a few things and make the vehicle a little bit more dynamic and make it handle a little bit nicer. Moving down a tiny little bit more, so you can see there we've got our volume rocker. This thing sounds incredible! Love it! So we've got our audio settings there. We can toggle the audio on or off just by pressing this button. We've also got the ability to hot press in order to turn the screen either to our calming screen, we can turn it off, or we can bring it back to life again. Sources, exactly that. We've got the ability to change between different sources, so our AM, FM, Sirius, XM, if my, oh, my phone's connected, etc. So we've got the ability to change between different devices there. As we start to move down, so as you can see there, we've got our four-way blinkers. We can change between songs or stations. We can manually tune that way. This is probably going to be the least effective method of tuning. Honestly, you're probably just better off using your voice, so either the voice command button on your steering wheel, or if you've set up the voice commands through that middle screen. Moving back down, so we've got some basic climate control settings. This is going to control our fan speed. Menu button along the middle there, so we press that, and that's going to hot button in order to open this up. So we can toggle the system on or off. We can turn on our heated steering wheel. We can figure out where the fan's going, so windshield face or feet. And the vehicle also is equipped with dual zone climate control. So if somebody likes it a little bit warmer as you're driving, you've got the ability to select dual zone climate control very easily. As you can see there, there dual zone is highlighted. So when we turn dual zone off, it's going to default to back, whatever, back to whatever the driver's setting was. Moving down a bit more, we do have a hot button in order to get rid in order to turn the system off if we want to. We can let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be, and we can also figure out what's going on with our air distribution. So I do think that the buttons here are a little redundant because this brings up the air distribution, this one brings up the air distribution, and a little bit more. So I don't really think we need both of those, but it's nice to know that we can kind of select whichever one we'd like to. Air circulation button, and one of the nice things because of the model of the vehicle that we're in, we do have heated and cooled front seats. Really, really nice. I love the fact that we've got that. As you can see, cooled seat is on right there, and that's going to be for the driver and for the passenger seat. Moving down a tiny little bit more, as you can see, we do have this little guy. So a little pocket there, and we do have a wireless charging pad inside of the model of the vehicle that we're in. So we're just going to drop our phone in there, and within a second, it'll. there we go. As you can see, Red light should be on there and we are charging. We also do have a few USB ports, so if you need to be plugged in because your phone doesn't support wireless charging, we've got that capability. Let me just close that pocket up from there. Now down a tiny little bit more. This is the cabin lighting. So we've got the ability to change out the cabin light if we want to. So if we look at our different ambient light sources, we've got the ability to select out between different colors. So whatever your color preference is there. And then you can control the intensity of the color as well by dragging that up and down. So really, really nice that we've got that capability. And you can also just make it out by my feet there. So really, really nice that we've got that light throughout the vehicle. Now, as we start to move back, so as you can see there, we do have a little armrest there. We've got two individual buttons. So one of the buttons, if we press it and lift up, that's going to leave the tray down. We can close it back up and we can press the other button, which is going to lift the tray up. Now, having said that, you do have the ability to drop the tray if you'd like to, or you can just manually lift it up to click it back into place. Looking inside there, so as you can see, we've got a little bit of storage along the sides, and we also do have a cigarette lighter adapter as well. Next up, let's take a peek at the steering wheel. So really, really nice look to it, and it is leather and heated, which is incredible. Starting off on the left-hand side, we do have the ability to change between songs or radio stations. We can either increase or decrease the volume, and we can also press the middle there in order to mute it out if we'd like to. Along the right hand side, we've got our basic back button for that middle screen. So as we kind of move up and down, we've got the ability to move into different things as well. So our basic setting, this back button is going to take us back a page or two as we go. And then we can kind of scroll up and down between our active screens there. We've got the ability to set those up. We'll get to that in just a second. Our trip counter, we can just press and hold the middle button there for a second. And that's going to reset us there instead. Moving down along the left hand side, so we've got the ability to use adaptive cruise control. The adaptive cruise is essentially a set it and forget it cruise control. So you set it at let's say 100 kilometers on the highway, car in front of you slows down, yours is automatically going to brake. If they pick up speed or get out of the way, yours will pick back up to your set speed again. We can turn the system on or off easily there, so as you see, let's zoom in a tiny little bit. 
All right, so as you can see there, we've got the system on now. So we can see that it's on whenever we see this. And we've got a distance indicator, so that's going to let us choose between how close or how far we are away from the vehicle that's in front of us. Now, once you've got your set speed, your preferred speed there, what you're going to do is either press one or the other there so we can set it, and then we can either increase or decrease either one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. This is the distance indicator, and then this one is our lane centering system. So the lane centering system is great because what will happen is if you start to veer over into a lane, one of three things will happen. So first one is either going to give you a steering wheel shake, almost as if we're running over rumble pavement, Way number two is actually going to pull you out and it'll recenter you back into your lane automatically. And way number three is it'll give you a shake and it'll recenter you and pull you back into your lane. So we've got the ability to toggle that on or off. Now, one thing to note, the lane centering, lane keeping system there, that won't actually turn on until you hit about 62 kilometers an hour. It's going to go green when it's active. And then once it's active, once you start to veer over without signaling, you're hugging the road, it'll turn yellow. If it turns red, then it's either going to shake or pull you back in depending on how you have it set up. And then we can just turn their system off from there. Looking along the right hand side, so we've got the ability to either answer or hang up on a phone call. We've got our display settings now. So display, we can look at our different gauges if we want to. So we've got our speedometer, we've got our eco, as well as our tachometer as well. So if we see how that changes out the difference there. So as you can see, we've now got a speedometer and our tachometer. Moving back, we've got our display and we can kind of select between different things. So we've got our info trip. So we can select what screens are showing up there. So tire pressure, power distribution, etc and our basic display setup. So distance, let's go through each one. So we've got our miles per gallon, liters per hundred, temperature, Celsius or Fahrenheit. We've got our tire pressure, preferred language as well. Next up, we've got a button for our audio settings. So audio, we can change between our presets. We've got our AM, FM. So we've got Sirius XM and my iPhone, as well as LifeX Live. So we've got a number of things that we can select without having to actually go into that screen in order to select our source. Pressing that button again will bring us back to the screen or if we're in one of these settings, press this back button to bring you back to the main screen again. Moving down a little bit, let's start off on the right hand side, which is going to be for our navigation. So we can look at my home, previous destinations, etc. Back again, we've got our settings button last. So settings button gives us a number of options. So looking at our drive control, so we've got the ability to look at what happens in different performance modes. So when we're in our sport mode, is it a normal or a sport? How is it going to handle when we're in our sport mode? Is it going to be a normal or a sportier feel as well? Driver assistance, so blind spot system. So if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, this is going to highlight orange. Do you see that? That's going to go orange whenever somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. You can toggle it off, but honestly, I do recommend keeping it on. It's a super simple and a very useful system. Cross traffic alert. If somebody's coming perpendicular from us as we're backing up, the vehicle is going to let us know of a potential collision. Cruise control, we've got either our adaptive or our normal cruise control set up there. Driver alert, do we want that system on or off? So the driver alert, if we start to veer over and we get too many notifications, vehicle is going to let us know we should probably take a break. And we've got our lane keeping system. So again, as I mentioned, works three different ways. So we get an alert, an aid, or both. The alert intensity is the steering wheel shake. So how intense is that shake? We've got our pre-collision assist. So pre-collision assist works a couple different ways as well. So if the vehicle senses a potential collision, pre-collision assist is going to let you know of that collision. If you don't brake in time, it's automatically going to brake for you with that setting turned on. And then for whatever reason, if the vehicle can't stop, it's actually going to take over the steering wheel and it's going to get you out of the way in order to ideally avoid but minimize the impact of the collision trailer sway control. As I mentioned, this is one of the reasons why you want to get the trailer tow package from the factory because we've got sway control, which means if the vehicle recognizes a trailer sway, it's automatically going to brake, brake the engine power in order to get that sway under control. Speedometer, we've got the ability to show kilometers and uh, kilometers an hour or miles per hour. And we've also got some basic vehicle settings. So we've got starting off with our lighting. So auto high beams. So the auto high beams is a great setting because if the vehicle senses it's too dark, it's automatically going to turn the high beams on for us. If it senses an oncoming vehicle, it's going to start dimming them before turning them off completely. And then it'll turn them right back on again after you pass that vehicle. So really great. Our auto lamp delay. When we go to lock the vehicle, does it stay on for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 120 seconds? Our welcome lighting is going to be in the outside. Let's hop outside and see how that looks. So oh, we've got the welcome lighting for the Lincoln Nautilus. It's saying hello to us. So really, really nice, especially later on at night. It's a really cool setting there. Nice that Lincoln's got that. Looking at our oil life. So we've got our oil life reset. So if you're changing the oil yourself. Wipers, we've got a few different options there. So we've got our courtesy wipe, which when we've got our windshield wipers going, it'll stop. And then with the courtesy wipe on, it's going to go one more time just to get rid of any excess liquid. 
are rain sensing wipers. What happens when rain hits a windshield? It's automatically going to go. One thing to note, make sure that you turn the rain sensing wipers off if you ever go into any sort of a car detailing place or if you're going into one of those auto car washes. So definitely make sure you turn that one off. Right, wiper run in reverse. So if the wipers are going and you put the car into reverse, it's automatically going to turn on the rear wiper for you as well. The alarm, do we want to have all sensors active, the perimeter sensing, or ask on exit? It's so really a matter of preference there. The auto engine off, so the one that's potentially going to kill power to the engine if we're stopped for an extended period of time, that one on or off, it's your preference. Easy entry exit, so when we go to turn the vehicle off, it's actually going to slide the driver's seat back in order to make it easier for you to get in and out of the vehicle. Our locks, we've got some different options there. Honestly, like the big ones are just keep them all selected. The auto unlock, if the vehicle senses that your phone or your key is close by, it's automatically going to unlock the doors. Our miss lock, so if you don't properly shut a door and the vehicle's going to, and then you go to lock it, the vehicle's going to double chirp at you to let you know. When we remote unlock, do all doors become unlocked or is it just the driver's door? Our mirrors, do we want that auto fold? Yes or no. Power liftgate, do we want to enable or disable the switch on the outside of the vehicle? and remote start. So as I mentioned, you can remote start through your cell phone or through the key fob. We can turn the system off completely at the bottom there, or we can figure out what's happening with the, with the remote start. So climate control, do we let the vehicle determine the, the climate or should we just go based off of our last setting? Seats and wheel, do we want the heated cooled seat to come on or the heated steering wheel? Duration of the start, five, 10 or 15 minutes. Moving down, we've got our tire mobility kit. So that's good for four years. So just keep that on as a default and it'll let you know when that needs to get changed out. Lastly, we've got our windows, so we've got the ability to remote open or close by using our key fob. Let's hop outside to see how that works. In order to use the key fob to roll the windows up and down, it's a very straightforward process. So to roll them down, all we're going to do is press the unlock button twice. On that second button press, we're going to hold. So one, two, and hold. And as you can see, all windows down, and to bring them back up again, all we're going to do is press the lock button twice, and same idea, on that second button press, we're going to hold. So one, two, and hold. Up they go. It's really that simple. It's a really, really great setting there. And moving back, we've got my key as well. So my key gives you the ability to set up certain limitations for an individual key fob. So if you're lending the vehicle out and you don't want somebody to speed excessively, you've got the ability to set a set speed just by creating a key along the bottom there. And that's gonna be the basics of the settings. Actually, I think we're done the basic settings there. Yeah, that is going to be the basics. So that'll be the basics of the actual steering wheel. Now let's have a little bit of a look along the outside there. So one thing to note, we do have our minus and our plus buttons there. So those are gonna be our gear selectors. So we've got the ability to adjust the gear that we're in by pressing the minus or the plus button there. Along our left-hand stick, along the very tip, we've got the ability to turn our lane keeping system on or off by pressing that one in. We've got the ability to flash our high beams as well if we'd like to. Looking along the right-hand side there, so rain sensing wipers, this is going to determine how sensitive the wipers are to that rain hitting our windshield. Along the right side, as you can see, we've got the ability to adjust what's going on with our rear wipers. We're going to pull in towards us in order to get those front wipers going, and we're going to push away in order to get the rear wipers going. Now, as we start to move up overhead, so a few things to point out. So as you can see there, we do have home links, so the ability to use a garage door opener at home if we've got one. We've also got our vanity mirror with the lights. Pop that open, then we can open this up, and we can slide it out if we need to block any sun that's hitting our eyes as we go. Moving up, now this is an auto dimming mirror, so if the vehicle senses that things are a little bit too bright behind us, it's automatically going to dim for you. Up overhead, we do have a few buttons there. So we've got the ability to turn on our cabin lighting, so individual lights if we want to. We can turn all cabin lights on. When the doors are open, do we want the cabin lights to come on? Yes or no. Now this one does have the twin panel sunroof, so the beautiful, beautiful panoramic roof there. We've got the ability to adjust it as necessary, so we can use that in order to open up the shade. So one button press opens it up halfway. Second button press is going to open it up that other half. As you can see in the middle there, we've got a few other buttons. So this one is going to open the sunroof. This is going to close it. And then this is just going to create... There you go. You see a little vent along the top there. You can close that up as well. Moving up a little bit more, as you can see, we do have our sunglasses holder. And along the top, we do have some sensors. So these are actually proximity sensors. So if you've got the windows rolled down and you've got the vehicle locked, if somebody reaches in, if you've got these sensors turned on, it's gonna sound the alarm, which is a pretty neat setting. 
Well, folks, that was a look at the all new 2021 Lincoln Nautilus. What did you think? If you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. If you kind of want to bounce some ideas off of me because you're not sure which type of vehicle you should go for, let me know. I'm more than willing and welcome to talk you through the process there as well. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Think about subscribing or sharing it with your social networks. And until I see you next time, make sure you stay safe. Minimum manufacturer's recommendation. There's a truck coming that's going to be loud as and we can also show your position on the map there. So, or so sorry. We've got our unlock button, our lock button, our. <laughs> what does that button do?